Hello, this is How Could It Bean, and today we are going to be reading I Slash Rules Horror. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. You're getting closer. Hey! Seems you have been work looking for a long time now. You may want to be faster. If you're reading this, and I'm assuming you haven't died yet, considering the other creatures couldn't, and skinlings are too small, screamers can't see, runners don't stop running, and the shadow people can't interact physically with the world. It would seem you're getting closer, though. I can sense it. You are, you most likely are in a new area, so I'll give you some new rules. I'm not sure what this series is, but we're, just, we're reading this one. The mirror rooms. One. Only look at the mirrors if they are underneath the blue lights. White lights will show you things no human should. The red lights will let it free, and no lights means it's already out. Two. If you break any mirrors, hide. If you hear footsteps, stop breathing. Under no circumstances should you continue breathing. Unless, of course, if the footsteps are gone. 3. Don't speak. It's very quiet here. Except for the footsteps. So any speech will alert them. 4. If you're getting chased, Run. Run as fast as you can. For as long as you can. Keep it as far away from you as possible. If it catches up, accept your fate. 5. If your eyes start hurting, sleep. It won't attack prey that can't defend itself. It doesn't find it fun to just kill it without its prey being aware. 6. Sickness is prone here, specifically the mirror sickness. Refer to Rule 11 for more on that. 7. The only safe drinks here are ones in cans. If it's in a bottle, it's most likely hydrochloric acid. Don't ask how I learned that. 8. Don't ask questions. 9. Any writing on a wall is not to be responded to. Unless you like losing all your blood. 10. Follow the red arrows. Don't sidetrack. It takes you to me. I will take you home. 11. The sickness has uh, three symptoms. From extreme nausea, severe coughing, and bleeding from eyes, ears, or nose. If you get any of these symptoms, go to the blue mirror and pray to I will verse Palms 9110. While looking yourself in the eyes. 12. If you break a mirror and jump into the portal behind it, you will be transported to the void. It is a very large, it is a very large, literally endless city. There are very big creatures and that drag obelisks of obsidian alongside them. Be careful in that world. No one can save you there unless you find another portal. It will send you back out to where you first entered the portal. 13. I think that's Morse code. Well, nobody translated it, so I have no idea what it's saying. 14. Ignore rule 13. No idea what happened there. 15. Stay happy and keep pushing. You'll get there eventually. 
We will meet soon. Trust me. Sincerely. Symbols. Hmm. How interesting. This one is called Benjamin. Do I actually have time to read all this? I'd say so, yeah. Upon arriving, I noticed that the house was completely empty, aside from the large husky greeting me by the door. It seemed happy to see me as I looked around the place. I noticed a few sheets of paper resting on the counter. It's red. Hello, Mr. or Mrs. or Mix. Dot Uxeter. Or what? Eight now. What was the other one? Crap, I forgot. <gasps> no. You gotta remind me. My name is Kyle. I wrote this little letter for you when you arrive, because Benjamin really means a lot to me. Please take really, really good care of him while we're gone, because he's a very sweet boy. Behind this letter is a bunch of rules that my mom left for, for you while we're gone. Be sure to follow him, okay? Oh, and there's also a drawing of Benjamin on, on the back of my letter, just in case he gets lost and you don't remember what they looked like. Okay, bye-bye now. See ya. On the back of the letter was a crudely drawn picture of what appeared to be a black and white husky with the blue eyes as well as a red collar. The same one that greeted me at the door. I picked up the letter that was behind it and began reading. Thank you for coming on such short notice. I've been meaning to take Kyle to visit his grandma for a long time now as she lives in the States and flights are expensive. She's not too fond of Benjamin or our, ho or our house, so please take good care of them. We'll be gone for over two weeks at most, but I'll be sure to send a payment over once we get it back. I'll be leaving you some rules to follow for both my dog and the house. Please be careful and try your best to memorize these. The husky sat up beside me as I moved to take a seat on the couch for reading again. Dog rules. 1. Benjamin can't be allowed to leave after dark. It'll be difficult to find after this point. 2. Feed Benjamin at least twice a day with either the dog food in the pantry or some meats from the fridge if he's been good. 3. Clean up after Benjamin every once in a while. 4. Take him on walks every morning, otherwise he'll be very vocal about it. 5. Let him rest wherever he pleases. Don't lock him in any room by himself. 6. Play with Benjamin whenever he's staring at you while lying down. It means he's bored and wants to play. 7. Don't let Benjamin into the master bedroom. He'll make a complete mess of it. 8. Bathe him next week, as we've already given him a cold bath before leaving. 9. Give Benjamin a toy if he's being loud. 10. Keep him safe. Bring him to the bedroom with you before you sleep. 11. He is the only dog in our house. House Rules 1. Keep the doors and windows locked at night. Activate the security system as well. Close the curtains. 2. Lock the basement and door every night. Keys near the front door. In case you forget, do the action in Rule 8. 3. No food should be brought outside the fridge after 9pm. There's a um, stark difference between the rules for the dog and the house. Reluctantly, I keep reading. 4. Don't answer the door to anyone at night. 5. 
No cell phone should be left on late at night. If need be, left, flip it over so the screen faces downwards, or cover it with something. 6. Don't move if your hand is being licked while you're asleep. It is probably just Benjamin. Just wash it off in the morning. 7. Don't touch any of the picture frames in the house. 8. If the power goes out, bring Benjamin over to the nearest room and lock yourself in with him. You can unlock it once the power is back on. If you lock yourself up because of Rule 2, then unlock after an hour. What's Rule 2 again? Oh. 9. If another husky with red eyes appears outside the window, close the curtains. It will leave momentarily. 10. Turn off all the lights before going to bed. 11. If you need to use the restrooms at night, knock at the door three times for entry. If you hear a vocal response, go back and wait for five minutes before trying again. 12. Don't open any email you have received that has open me in bold letters. I mean, that's just general advice, probably. Most of the time, those are, are probably e e scams or spam emails. 13. Do your chores in the morning. This includes cleaning after Benjamin, doing the dishes, sweeping, etc. 14. No other dog should be in my home. Remember, large, black and white, blue eyes, red collar. If there's a difference, shoot him out. 15. Don't go in the basement. 16. Don't break or steal anything from the house. It needs to be respected. 17. Clean up after yourself. 18. Stay alert. Don't tell anyone about this place. Just in case I forget anything, I'll message you immediately. It's better if you take a picture of this on your phone so that it'll be easier to remember. Alright, take care. We'll be back soon enough. Benjamin seemed to have fallen asleep beside me. I glanced at the time. 5.14. It's getting late. I quickly started to lock up the doors and windows, including the basement door, as I kept rereading the rules at hand. Maybe it was better not to take on this job. Once I made sure the first few rules were followed, I sat down next to Benjamin, who was still asleep. Thank him, I'm slowly ma made me slowly get tired. We were both woken up by banging at the door. Please, help, somebody, let me in. The voice sounded like a little girl's. She kept banging at the door, harder and harder. My heartbeat started to quicken as I heard the, door, as I heard the girl pounding at the door. I could have sworn it would break the hinges. As Benjamin started to growl, the noise suddenly stopped. I sat back down with Benjamin, now on my lap, as I take a few deep breaths. God, I hope these two weeks go by fast. That was an interesting way to frame the rules horror story. How to survive the illness. If you're reading this, you've managed to survive up to this point. But whatever you've been doing up to this point isn't going to work forever. The virus has been mutating to be stronger and more deadly to humans ever since it crossed the infection barrier between us and the animals. It doesn't need us as hosts anymore. To continue your life on this planet, you'll start you'll need to start following the rules on this list. One, nocturnal animals have started preying on humans as a means to infect them. They are quiet and calculating in killers, so you would need to make sure you wake up every few hours during the night, 
or if you have other survivors with you, sleep in shifts so that someone is always awake. You know, that's why night people exist. If you hear a noise, you must investigate it. If you don't, and there is in fact a creature, it will bite you in your sleep, leaving you to an awful death by the virus. Two. If there is a creature, you must shine a light on it to distract it and then kill it. Preferably with a quiet, long range or medium, long or medium range weapon. The virus has been trying to learn how nocturnal animals work, but it hasn't figured out that light isn't actually dangerous to them. So for now, light will stun infected animals long enough for you to kill them. 3. When you get up in the morning, be sure to cover as much of your body as possible. No matter the temperature. One of the most important is to cover the hands and neck, both of which are targets for the viruses. Is dire uh, the you know, all, all animals. Thick leather or mesh fabrics with metal interwoven in them are recommended for this. Four. You'll need to try and find as many canned goods as, and as much edible forage as possible, as hunting is now completely off the table as a source of food. Slacking up before other people or get what remains of the available food is the is of utmost importance. Water is just as important, but you can get that from uh, um, natural sources, such as rivers, streams, lakes, and ponds. I want to try the last two under unfortunate circumstances as still water is prone to being more dangerous. Yeah, it does get more um, bacteria and stuff in it. If you're going to get water from natural sources, you need to bring it to a rolling boil for at least 10 minutes just to make sure there are no traces of the virus in it from the composing corpses or you could be infected. 5. The virus has, has adapted much better to the daytime animals, so they're, they are much more dangerous than the nocturnal animals. Smaller animals will, will try to infect you by biting your hands and legs, while larger animals will try, uh, try to kill you by ripping you out your throat. Staying far away is the best course of action, but if you can't, try to kill them by any means necessary. It's the next best as option. Just don't get bit. If you do, you're done for. 6. Go home and repeat the cycle until you die, or by some miracle, or oh, someone finds a way to get rid of this virus. In case of infection or exposure to infected persons. So, you've seen an infected ed person. You've seen what that virus has turned them into. The virus has made them into husks of flesh, forced to grotesquely walk the earth. The blood vessels under their skin are breaking and turning their whole body into one large bruise, Ready to explode and cover or to living with infected blood at the slightest impact. In the worst case, you have been bitten or infected otherwise, and now it's likely your turn to become one of those husks. If you want to even have a chance, you need to follow all of the upcoming rules. 1. If you are bitten at extremely an extremity, Cut it off. This is your best chance. Hope that it doesn't stretch through the rest of your body. Yes, it's incredibly painful, but you have no better option. Hope to not bleed out or die of infection. 2. If the blood of an infected person has, has infected you, or if you have managed to somehow get infected in any other way, your chance of living is to make your body temperature rise as high as you can and above 40 degrees Celsius to try and kill the virus. As much as this is your only option, it's also incredibly dangerous, as it might just kill you anyway. So be prepared for the eventually, uh, for that eventuality. If you have, have loved ones, prepare them for it as well. If neither of those work and you haven't killed yourself from the solutions given, that means you're going to die. There's no way around it. First, you will start to feel cold as your core temperature goes down to accommodate the virus. Then, something from your legs, veins, and small blood vessels also will start to burst, leaving bruises. This will travel up your body. You will start to lose control of your body and be unable to make your body move in any way. Lastly, the virus will cause small obliques in your frontal lobe as it make 
you can capable of most forms of higher thinking. That's the last thing you will be able to think about before you functionally die and your body turns into one of those grotesque husks. There is no cure, there is no hope, and soon there will be no humans. Well, that got dark. But we are here for horror, so I guess dark is kind of expected. Alright. West County Insane Asylum Job Instructions. West County Insane Asylum went out of business 30 years ago and only has a few records of it ever existing. It closed in 1979 when it had nearly $900,000 in debt. This is one of a la few last recordings of the patients before they died by gunfire after the police broke into the building. April 16th, 1977. Joseph Alley. Welcome to the West County Insane Asylum, where you will work as our newest nurse. The instructional pamphlet will teach you about our patients and how to handle them if anything happens. Please is note that this instructional pamphlet has to be updated every two or to three months in order to keep it up with the different patients coming in and out and even existing patients changing their habits. Once the day occurs, you will have to go to the front office to receive a paper of the changes that have happened. The papers you have, have are all the most recent changes that have happened. So take good amount of care memorizing these rules, as far as you're to comply means you will likely be injured or killed if not careful. Edward H. Joseph, patient 007. Edward was admitted to the hospital on December 6, 1975, when he was caught during a two-hour police chase and they went to collect him. Edward often goes into a somewhat primal state of mind where he will act out and attack anything moving. Edward is oftentimes very ruthless and will not hesitate to beat you to death if you trigger him. Here is what to do to prevent that. 1. Always have his meals. Be on time. He wants his meals on the following times. 12 o'clock a.m., 6 o'clock p.m., and 7.30 a.m. If they are not at these exact times, he will begin to get angry. And if it happens enough, he will go insane. 2. Never talk to him while in the same room as him. He considers it rude to talk to his face and will yell at you to get out before he attacks. 3. Turn off the lights when he asks. He usually doesn't have a specific time and he wants to go to bed and will do so when he thinks it's good. If you do it before or after, he will start ripping apart the foundation of his room until you have the lights on or off when he wishes it to be. 4. Do not touch him. He has a mental condition that perceives touch as violent birds and will immediately attack you. Five, know that you cannot take Edward in a fight as he is far too strong due to previously being in a lab rat for illegal steroids that gave him superhuman strength. And we are trying to figure out ways to limit his power. Edward has been known to who break through the solid steel doors to his room after enough times. Here's what to do to calm on him so this doesn't happen. And 1. Stop whatever is causing him to as a stress as he is able to calm down if not over the breaking point. 2. If he is too far gone, then use the lever in the asylum control room to Edward's room where his room will be filled with Nauseous gas to put him to sleep. Three. If you cannot calm him, escape the asylum as soon as possible so that security can control the situation. Description. I think that's sure been at the beginning, but okay. Seven foot four. Dang, that's tall. 309 pounds with messy long hair and beard. Sicilian male. 
He has a strong body type and a strong jaw. Howard Mansley, Patient 005. Howard is a creature with unknown origins and was seen prancing around New York on May 22, 1975, causing terror to anyone nearby. Howard is an extraordinary creature as he seems to have developed features similar to armadillos. Howard has an IQ far below average and does not know if he causes pain to others around him. He was secreted toxic gas into the air via holes under his shell that will paralyze anyone who breathes it in for years. Howard often stays curled for days on end and sleeps for what seems like months. During the times he is not asleep, he will do the following and you will have to respond as such. 1. Accept any game that Howard offers you to play. It doesn't matter if you win or not. If you do not accept, he will become saddened and release an unfathomable amount of the gas into his cell and will require his cell to be aired out and stored. 2. Do not give Howard anything sugary as he will become reactive and scream non-stop for hours and hours on end. 3. Do not go into Howard's room without wearing all red as he will otherwise perceive you as hostile. 4. Do not touch Howard while he was asleep as he will bite you and release venom similar to Cobra Bite into your bloodstream. Description 5 foot 1, 392 pounds with a horrific face stretching up into his back. His body is in the shape of an armadillo with fingers for limbs. What the heck? That is horrific. Okay. John, patient 002. John is a creature never seen in before from the asylum and was never made to asylum officially and came on, on in, uh, in January 10th, 1969. John is a faceless human-like creature who often sits in the middle of it, its room non-stop. It doesn't eat, drink, or even perceivably eat sleep. Never, nonetheless, he reportedly will try to get people to come into his room where they will stand and around him until they expire. Strangely enough, he will only go after one person at a time, and others will not experience what the, per what the chosen person does. But if the chosen person ends up put in John's room, they will stay there for the rest of their lives. Efforts to get them out are useless. Um, are fruitless as, as as unless you always look at the patient forever, they will always return to the room, seemingly teleporting there. And the person who entered the room lose all emotion and send around on John an infinite joy. Here's what to do when chosen. 1. Stay away from John at all times. Close your eye to John, the more you want on to go to his room. 2. Do not listen to the calls from his room. John will try to lure you to him, and nothing else off limits for him to call you to his room. 3. Do not listen to your thoughts. Anything you do that seems off is John trying to call you to him. 4. Come to John's room. 5. Come to John's room. 6. Come to John's room. 7. Come to John's room. 8. Come to John's room. 9. Come to John's room. 10. Come to John's room. 11. Come to John's room. 12. Come to John's room. 13. Come to John's room. Description. Where is my face? 5 foot 11, unknown weight, curly brown hair, skinny body, pale skin. Patient 001. Description. There is no one here. Freeson or Orion, patient 000. Freeson is the strangest patient we 
who has a tendency to read the history of the person he, he lays eyes on. He was one of the only patients who have admitted themselves on February 19th, 1952. He only needs a quick glance of you to know nearly everything about you and has caused madness in the OC reads as he has a tendency to read out things the victim didn't know oh, uncontrollably. Here are some things to avoid that. 1. Avoid talking to him face to face. But then he sees your face, he will reveal your history every time he hears your voice. 2. Do not touch him. People who touch him be become unmoving for hours on end and will develop an irrational fear of Friesen. 3. Know that Friesen is otherwise the most sane person and should be treated with care and understanding logic. 4. Do not feed Friesen cashews. He is highly allergic. 5. Friesen has a has asthma, and there is a specifically made bed uh, etiquette next to the store and a full or body suit to enter without him seeing you. 6. Do not show Raisin outward mansly as he was a for of horrified of what has happened to him and the secrets he holds. So much so, he is the only one that he has not revealed anything, any information about, um, and instead cries until he is taken away. Well, that last one is terrifying. Like these weren't already absolutely horrifying to begin with. <sighs> Last story. Souls. You are just in your room, flopped on your bed with nothing to do. Your mom wonders why you won't go outside even though it's sunny. But sadly, you're an introvert with no friends. Ow, I just got personally attacked by a Rolls Horror story. You know, I expect this from some other subreddits, but this, this was a surprise. You got bored and decided to go through your bookshelf, which has lots of books since you are a crazy reader. You look and find a book that you've never known you had, and called Souls. Since you are a very curious individual, you decide to look into the book. You look at it and notice that the book has more pages than it looks. You notice the book has the name of every person who has ever who has every date. It even has their birth and death dates, what they were like during their life, and their cause of death. You decide to skip to the last one, but that's when you realize the page is expanding. Is this book magical or what? Suddenly you get teleported to this dimension that leads to a door. The door says enter on top, but on the side there's a big white board that says rules. You decide to read the rules before going in the door. If you're reading this, I'm guessing you went to the last page. It's okay, because we'll help you explore this place. You will be teleported back to your last known location after 18 hours if you follow these rules correctly. One, you can't wait in this room for long. After reading these rules, you have to go through the door because the main room will light on fire and you will be engulfed in, in flames. Two, this place has souls of every person that once lived, but the only thing in, in is this isn't the real souls of the people. It's more of a replica of all of them. Three, there's two different categories in, of people in this place. Those being 3B, average people, self-explanatory. These are just average people who happen to die in many types of ways. They act normal, but some can be mean like when they, they were alive. But the worst they will do is probably just beat you up. 3C, evil people. These were people who did horrible stuff when they were alive. Such as unaliving, unconsensual adults all the times. Mass killings, pedophiles, and people who have way too much fun with their dogs and other animals. 
etc. These of are usually the more aggressive and stronger, and they kill any incident and, and anyone that are in their place. 4. Killers are the strongest out of all of them. The strength depends on how many they have killed. Low level, low level killers typically have a kill count of 10 and under. Examples, William a Atkinson, Elliot, Roger, Marvin, and Meyer. Mediums usually the only round, usually around 11 to 29. James Hebert, Gabriel Wartman, Jeffrey Dahmer, and the strongest have a kill count of 30 plus. Stephen Paddock, Jane Wade Acey, Timothy McVeigh. I'm not sure who these people are. I love them anyway. Five. By the way, when I said the regulars can't kill you, I lied. These souls are more are paranoid, and if you touch them in any way or even look at them weirdly, they will kill you with any weapon they have on them. Six. You can meet celebrities here that you miss. Talk to them and make make friends. But still remember rule five. Seven. The souls are invincible. If you try to punch them or anything, it will just go right through them. Eight. Forgot to mention, time here is slower. Do not trust any clocks here. 9. Don't worry about food or water here. None of that matters. Wow, this really just dropped in quality really quickly. 10. Never tell any of the souls that they aren't real. If so, every soul in the whole room will turn on you and you will be tr tortured for eternity. Forget 18 hours, because you will be kept here forever. 11. If any of the souls offer you food or drink, do not take it. If you do, you will turn into one of them. 12. Do not flirt with any of them. If you do, rule 5 will happen. 13. After 18 hours, you, will, you are done. You will be home again and you can finally go to sleep. Read a book aside from this one, or just do whatever. 14. Burn the book. There are 7 copies in the world, and we are trying to get rid of them. 15. If you make the same mistake again, you'll be instantly teleported to evil for evil section of this the place, and let's just say they won't be happy. Enjoy your stay. Hopefully after this, you won't make the same mistake as before. Make yourself at home here, but don't get too comfortable. And that was r slash rules horror, horror, if I can say words correctly. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!